Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you how to edit audio in Audacity. Today what we're going to be focusing on is uh, reducing noise as well as properly leveling your audio in Audacity. So let's go ahead and get to it. Before we jump into the tutorial here, just want to show you my setup. I have a Behringer Xenix A02 mixing board with an XLR input going to this Lix Pro LDC-10 microphone with wind filter and of course with a uh, boom stand and shock mount here. And uh, this microphone, if you can find it, it's really good buy. It's like, I got it for 50, 60 bucks. Comes with all the necessary accessories except for the stand and the pop filter. And um, yeah, it has really low noise when of course you don't introduce anything. So what I'm gonna do for this clip is I'm gonna to try to introduce some artificial noise out of fan behind the camera, just a really powerful fan. That's gonna introduce a lot of uh, a lot of just wind noise here, which we'll definitely hear in the track. Also, normally I have this microphone, the most optimal, you wanna have your microphone as close to the subject you're recording as possible. So normally when I'm recording, I have it about here, and I'm usually, of course, just looking at the levels and then I'm speaking directly into the microphone when I'm doing just voiceovers or any standard recordings. If I'm doing any sort of tutorials, I'm usually looking at the computer screen, but I had the microphone adjusted to where it points towards my mouth as close as possible so that, of course, I can pick up more of my mouth rather than the surroundings, which is what you want to, which is basically your end goal here. And of course, uh, you always want to have your audio adjusted as loud as possible without peaking or distortion, which I'll show you here in a little bit. But uh, for now, we're going to do a worst case scenario. I'm going to have our mic po uh, pointed about here, which is nowhere near optimal. Going to have our levels turned down a little bit just to uh, simulate a kind of amateurish recording. Someone may kind of just be erring on the side of caution, doesn't want to peak, so they have everything turned down which is a really bad idea. You always want to figure out what your limits are, especially for recording audio like this. Otherwise, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to f uh, pick out noise. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, um, one thing I do want to say here is when you are recording, you do, uh, especially if you're in a really noisy environment like I'm about to simulate here, you want to leave at least two to three seconds before you start speaking or making any noise to sample said noise and or background noise so you can remove it easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire my fan here. Excuse me. And we're gonna hit record on this bad boy. Hello, this is a test testing noise reduction in our Audacity tutorial. I am Michael from Power Playground. Hello, this is a test, testing noise reduction in our Audacity tutorial. I am Michael from Power Playground. Not to get too sidetracked, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more recording here. This is just to uh, show the optimal recording levels and of course, just little to no noise interference as well as the proper mic placement and show you all and kind of compare the difference between the two. Essentially, pretty much any sort of media, you want to do little to no editing as possible. If you can get away without editing your audio, which oftentimes, that, especially if I'm recording with this setup, I really don't have to do too much editing. I might have to peak, increase levels by like a few dB, but other than that, it's not too much editing I have to do here just because this is a pretty optimal setup, as well as I have a proper sound proof or proper. Uh, acoustics inside of this room here. Uh, let's go ahead and start here. Hello everyone, this is another test here. This is your host Michael from Power Playground. This is the optimal settings for gain adjustment as well as the optimal distance for the microphone and of course the reduced amount of noise as in there, the only thing going right now is my vent which is a very small register. Hello everyone, this is another test here. This is your host Michael from Power Playground. This is the optimal settings for gain adjustment as well as the optimal distance for the microphone and of course the reduced amount of noise as in there, the only thing going right now is my vent which is a very small register. 
Another thing I do want to mention here is that these audio clips will be available to download in the description if you want to follow along. Audacity is a free program that will also be in the description as well. So let's go ahead. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get cracking Audacity. I'll show you all how to do it. All right, folks. So we're in Audacity here. To the left, I have the unoptimized recording, which has the unoptimized uh, mic distance from my mouth, and of course the uh, lower levels, as well as a high amount of noise. And to the right, I have a least amount of noise, of course mic at the optimal uh, distance, as well as proper levels on the board, as well as Audacity here. So let's go ahead and jump to our recording 01 here, expand this real quick. Now first off, what you want to do is you want to get friendly with the mic level, recording levels as well as the playback levels. Recording levels are going to ensure that you have a proper recording level when you are recording audio into Audacity. You want to make sure to tune it to, like I said, where you don't have peaks, which um, one thing you'll always want to do is go to view, make sure show clipping is checked that I highly recommend making sure that is checked. Uh, that way it'll give you a red line where whenever you are peaking and it'll show you real time when you should be adjusting your audio properly. So you should be turning it down or turning up your recording level. So just get used to it. Of course, uh, speak at your normal voice. Do, do plenty of test recordings. Test out your environment wherever you're at. Make sure the background noises aren't too crazy. And uh, so that definitely get familiar. Uh, definitely just... Uh, Play around with that, see what's best for your microphone. All microphones are different. Um, and then, of course, playback volume. That's just the volume that the audio track will play back at. And to the left of that, you ha we have a playback level meter. So let's go ahead and just uh, play our track. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go past the uh, blank noise slate because it's pretty quiet, and just play the audio real quick. Hello, this is a test testing noise reduction in our Audacity tutorial. I am Michael from Power Playground. Okay, so as you can see, it was pretty quiet. Couldn't really hear too much. Um, and then if you notice right at the top here, this little blue line is the peak audio level for what we just played back. And it is sitting right above negative 24 decibels. That is really, really quiet. We usually you want to be sitting at uh, anywhere from between negative 9 and negative 3 is pretty optimal for uh, just record, just record any sort of recording there any uh, anything close zero close to zero is okay although it uh you do kind of risk peaking in case if you have a loud noise like say if you drop something like this hard drive this is definitely going to peak yep <laughs> that's uh and then of course my voice is a lot quieter than that loud clunk of a noise that that pound hard drive that i dropped on the table which is definitely dead <laughs> So that um, so yeah, you definitely want we definitely want to increase the noise the noise levels on this here. So first off, before we do that, I'm going to click on this recording zero. Basically, this is just the name of the file, maybe track one if you just have a raw recording. I just had to save, so click on that next to this X. Don't click the X, or else you kill your audio. Just edit undo, then recording waveform db this is going to change our view to decibel so this is going to give us a better idea of how loud everything is the other one uh it's more you definitely the uh difference between waveform db and waveform is that the waveform uh shows you a different type of view both have their benefits i like uh, using waveform whenever i'm trying to see specific like peaks in the audio it's a little bit easier to view than db say if i like drop something like that hard drive it's gonna be really easy to point that out in the waveform view rather than waveform db just because uh, the difference in isn't going to be as subtle as it is in the db view so what we're going to do here first is we're going to go to a or we're going to highlight our entire audio track you just click this bar on the side to do that and then let's go to effect and we want to go to amplify now this is going to bring up this dialog here uh, it's going to show you amplification db and then have a slider which i Rarely mess with that. I just type in the values. The new peak amplitude decibel. This is very important here. Since um, now this this peak amplitude number, it'll depend on a few different factors here. One, if you have a, a peak like me dropping that hard drive, I don't have anything like this or like that in this recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with negative three. Usually I go like zero or like point five, negative point five, 
or something like that if I had a really loud peaking noise so I can uh, I, I can get everything else boosted up really high and then of course just lower that later but yeah and then allow clipping never do this um, I recommend running a preview it's kind of gonna be kind of tricky because it's just gonna sample the first five seconds which is just nothing but yeah if you're not sure if it's gonna sound that good then do preview another thing I do want to point I do want to stress I can't stress this enough do not amplify multiple times you can do it you can maybe get away with it twice or three times but dear god do not do it any more than that you are going to distort the audio it's going to sound garbled and terrible so just try not to do that if you need to do that you need to re-record your audio it's a lost cause at that point because you are just putting in way too much time for something that should be a lot simpler so let's go ahead and uh amplify this here so as you notice this was really quiet and barely on the scale right now it is super loud so let's play uh let's play a little bit of this back here hello this is a test testing noise reduction in our audacity tutorial i am michael from power playground okay so as you noticed there's a lot of noise in the background now let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this noise so i'm going to play this back real quick make sure there's no other uh weird noises or other things in here basically you just want that fan droning noise that we have in the background or whatever it is it may just be static but that's i'm going to go ahead and just play this just to make sure we have a good clean sample of our background noise And yeah, that's pretty good here. You want, but you want at least two to three, two to three seconds is the optimal amount. That should be plenty fine for our clip here. So let's go ahead and go to effect, and then we're going to go to noise reduction. So first off, now that we have our noise highlighted, we're going to click get noise profile. Okay, now that we have that, let's highlight our entire track, and then we are going to go to noise reduction. In fact, actually. In order to get a proper preview, I'm going to clear out, I'm just gonna highlight. So if you just click and drag and you hit the delete key, boom, it's gone. Okay, so now we can go ahead and since it only gives you a five second preview, this should give us a better idea of what we got going on here. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, defaults are usually pretty good here. So I'm not going to mess with it too much or else you're just going to get a lot of weird distortions. So let's, uh, let's preview it out and see what we got. Hello, this is a test. Testing noise reduction. Okay, so that is a lot better. Keep in mind, you're not going to be able to remove all the noise. Basically, that is going to, um, that's going to require a lot of uh, chopping out of your audio and you're gonna get a lot of distortions. So what we heard, it didn't sound too distorted. It sounded pretty decent quality there. Like I said, the goal is not to do this. Um, try not to do this here. And uh, sorry about the train noise here. We'll skip this real quick. <laughs> All right, so now let's go ahead and hit okay since I'm pretty satisfied. Like I said, it's pretty reduced. Now um, what this would be, cons now I'm gonna introduce you all to a technical term. It's gonna be called noise floor. Essentially what noise floor is, is the actual level at where your noise is in terms of decibel level. Right now our noise floor is pretty decent. It's at about uh, negative 45 to 50 decibels, which is pretty acceptable, pretty normal there. Um, of course, you definitely wanna keep the noise. Now the noise floor, you wanna keep that below or way below your actual audio levels of what you're actually trying to record and sample here. So for instance, we have ours right now is at uh, negative three peak decibels, which is pretty nice and pretty distinguishable there. So that is really decent there. So now we have a pretty workable audio clip. Let's go ahead and play that back real quick. Hello, this is a test testing noise reduction in our Audacity tutorial. I am Michael from Power Playground. Okay, so that's pretty good there. Not a whole lot of noise going on. That's pretty good. Now, gonna export our audio, and we always want to go with wave. Yeah, just save it as a wave file. Wouldn't recommend MP3. We don't really want any compression, uh, especially if you're just working with video. Of course, um, you can get the lame codec and use MP3 if you're just using like, a song. But I usually recommend keeping your audio in waveform. Uh, 
I, if the only reason I recommend saving it as an Audacity project if you had multiple tracks and you're actively editing it or wanted to edit in the future, I rarely do because it creates a lot of files. So definitely use that option sparingly. I rarely use it to be honest just because I only do single track recording. If it's multiple, it's uh, usually something I just do in like one fell swoop and edit it real quick. But that's about it, folks. So hope you all liked this first tutorial here. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hey, check out some of our other videos here. And of course, there'll be more of these awesome audio tutorials to come.